I was standing down there and I literally. There. No. Dude. There's no way. It's not even September yet. Pumpkin spice. It's spooky spit. <laughs> it's white girls! They're back! I love my fair share of fantasy movies. They always tend to have something in them that makes them magical. I'm talking about magic. Sorcery, wizardry, whatever you want to call it. Is it just fantasy, though? If you were caught partaking in any of this magic in the late 1600s, you might be considered a witch. But if you were a witch living in Salem, Massachusetts, you would be invited into families' homes with open arms. Ah, what do you look at that? Get in here, we're just about to eat dinner. I'm kidding, you would be burned alive. What do you say you and I make things interesting? Witches have many stereotypes associated with them. Big black pointy hats with a large brim, black cats, green skin, green goo brewing in a black cauldron, and of course, brooms. Now a lot of these stereotypes have an explanation, but some, not so much. Specifically why we envision witches flying around on these bad boys. I mean, of all things, why this? Why not a cool wooden staff or something? Why a household broom? My thought is this. I literally, I have no idea. I literally have no idea. Oh God, this is so stupid. The only thing I could literally think of, and it's, it's so dumb, but witches are usually portrayed as old, raggedy, and dirty. In movies, their homes are often dusty, covered in cobwebs, and dilapidated. My guess is that these people were often seen sweeping and trying to keep after their homes. I don't know, I literally have no idea. And maybe because they were such a hated community, whenever they would go in public, they needed some form of protection. So why not just grab the closest thing to the door on your way out? Maybe a broom? I... Yeah, it's, it's definitely a wild guess, but that's the best I can come up with. So to get a better understanding of the truth, we have to take a step back in time to 14th century Europe. Back then, religion ruled all. Those who spoke out against the religion or practiced others were often seen as evil and were sometimes killed. Hey, Pa. Hey, Pa. Pa. Hey, hey, Pa. Hey, Pa. Hey, Pa. Pa. Hey, Pa. Hey, what if, what if God was actually a frog? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Many had a strong belief that the devil himself could give certain people power to harm others in return for their loyalty to their religion. This was known as the European Witch Craze. It lasted from the 14th century all the way up until the 17th century. During this time, between 200,000 and 500,000 people were executed. Seriously? Around the time the European Witch Craze was coming to an end, a little town known as Salem, Massachusetts decided they were going to take the reins for a bit. In January of 1692, two girls started behaving oddly, having episodes where they screamed, threw things, muttered weird sounds, and contorted themselves into strange positions. One of Salem's local doctors blamed it on the supernatural. On February 29th, the girls came forward and blamed three women. Strangely enough, one of these women actually confessed. She stated, The devil came to me and bade me to serve him. So of course, all three women were then placed in jail. This then led people to accusing everyone of being a witch, the youngest being four years old. Some genuinely were concerned that their neighbor was a witch. Others were accusing people just because they did them wrong. A little candlelight dinner never hurt anybody. Ooh, vanilla, my favorite. Unfortunately, 19 people were hanged because of this. This story led to the book we know so well, The Crucible, which was written in 1953 by Arthur Miller. I feel like we've all had to read that in high school, right? And for anyone watching this that's not yet in high school, just wait. And if you don't have to read it, kindly drop the name of the high school you're going to in the comment section below so I can call and complain because I had to read that shit in front of everyone! Get your the iconic depiction of a witch standing over a cauldron stirring up a green brew actually has some truth behind it. Yeah, no sh 
It's 80 degrees out. You think I'm doing this for fun? I'm sweating bullets here. Okay. In 1976, evidence was found that the Salem witch trials may have begun from an outbreak of rye ergot. Ergot is a fungus that can form on grains such as rye. At this time, bread was a major part of the diet. The side effects from ingesting or eating the fungus were flu-like symptoms. Oh, and the acid trip of a lifetime. The fungus produced mind-altering effects much like that of hallucinogenic drugs. Researchers suspect that the girls who first experienced episodes in Salem were actually just ill from eating contaminated bread, which explains why they were muttering weird sounds and contorting their bodies into weird positions. Mind-altering drugs were actually very heavily used in this time period. People began to study the psychological effects of ergot and discovered chemicals known as alkaloids. Alkaloids are found in a number of plants, and in the Middle Ages, these plants were used to make hallucinogenic brews. One compound known as hyacinth produced great mind-altering effects, but it also caused severe intestinal discomfort when ingested. Here's where these come into play. Your depiction of a witch being associated with a broom is about to be ruined forever. It was discovered that hyacinth could be absorbed through the sweat glands in the armpit and the mucous membranes in the nether regions. It's said that witches would apply the ointment to their broom handles, straddle them, and go to town. Dude, keep it family friendly. I think we crossed the family friendly line a while ago. Yeah, you're right. Alice Kyteller was the first recorded person condemned of witchcraft in Ireland. The sad part, she was accused by her own stepchildren. The records from the investigation state the following. In rifle in the closet of the lady, they found a pipe of ointment, wherewith she greased a staff, upon which she ambled and galloped through the thick hen thing. Another record from the Kyteller case in the 15th century states this. But the vulgar belief, and the witches confess, that on certain days or nights they anoint a staff and ride on it in the appointed place, or anoint it themselves under the arms or in other hairy places. Oh, what's wrong? Hocus Pocus 2. What, a, what about it? She's riding on Roombas. What? Oh God. <sighs> Those poor vacuums. Some old photos also show some truth. This wood engraving from the 17th century depicts a female standing over a fireplace with a broomstick between her legs. Here is a more updated version. That one was much clearer. You could really see her applying the brew between her legs. Please find another way of saying that. Lathering up a broomstick and a hallucinogenic ointment in which she absorbs through the mucous membranes of her vagina. Oh, yep, yeah, we're good, we got it, we're good. Great. And here is a painting by Francisco Goya from the late 1700s, which shows two witches. I guess you could say they took flying high to a whole new meaning. I feel like we should stop calling them brooms and start calling them applicators. I'm, I'm officially done with you. I can't stand. I am literally you! The word witch comes from Old English. A male witch was called a wicca, and a female witch was known as a wiki, or a, a wicca. I don't know how you pronounce that. Eventually, the two words were combined into a wiki. Witchy, witchy. I'm pretty sure that that's pronounced witch. It's just the Old English way of spelling it. I'm not sure. The modern meaning wicca now refers to the form of paganism known as witchcraft. Somebody who participates in paganism is known as a pagan. When we think of somebody that's a pagan, we often assume that they worship the <laughs> devil or participate in Satanism. But paganism is literally any religion that is outside of the main world religions, specifically non-Christian based or pre-Christian based religions. For example, the Nordic religion Asatro is the worship of Norse gods. That would be considered paganism. The ancient Greeks were polytheistic, meaning they believed in many gods like Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, so this would mean that they were pagans as well. The problem was that the term was so negatively used to describe witchcraft and Satanism that it now has a negative connotation. A connotation is an idea or feeling that a word invokes in addition to its literal or primary meaning. When we hear the word pagan, we often jump to Satan worshiper. Which is ironic because most witches were never even involved in any cultish acts of Satanism that they're often portrayed as. So, do we depict witches flying around on brooms because they really like to clean their houses and they also needed a form of self-defense? My God, that was so stupid. No, did witches actually even fly around on brooms? No. And last but not least, did I absolutely ruin the way you view witches? Yes, yes I did. Almost forgot my applicator.